Hey there, how's it going? Randy, the REI Rockstar with the REI Rockstar blog, where you can learn how to flip houses, no money down, and uh, get some free training as often as possible. If you don't already know about me, guys, uh, check out the blog and uh, join the uh, fan club. You get some free stuff like a free contract and uh, even have access to our private 3000 member plus uh, Facebook group. So um, go ahead and join that up when you can. Let's get right into today's training, which is how to properly co-wholesale a deal. This is a great way, by the way, for a beginner to do their first deal. Uh, main reason being that you have a zero marketing budget. Literally, you're just finding another investor with a deal and you're bringing in value by bringing in another buyer and uh, making some money. So first thing you're gonna need is you're actually going to need some deals. So you guys may already know I have a, a tool within my own company where I can find deals online um instantly it's rei leads on demand and this tool actually breaks down the type of deal um the lead that you know as it comes in so i'm going to go to the other investor deals so you can see here there's already 126 other investor deals so let's see here let's see what we got so um, once we find the deal i'm going to go ahead and analyze it using my other software tool which is aria auto comp and i'll be able to tell you know how much the property's worth but here's one right here it says south scottsdale oldie but a goodie i'm wondering what zip code it is right away um so no address i could see it's not going to be helpful larger home very fast under 250k needs renovation call martin and it's got some pictures um for sake of the training we need an address guys so let's keep going Fixer upper, 67 grand. That's out in California. That's up in Pine Top. Uh, Mesa Gilbert, 179. Baseline. Obviously, for the privacy of the tenants and the homeowners, a lot of times you'll notice your leads don't have like a full address, um, which isn't going to help us today. We need an address. So, usually over here, here's one on Townley. And actually, let me see. Here's this one. Is this Sunny Slope? It's like the worst neighborhood. Okay. Not exactly sunny slope. So we'll copy this address. Um, and, you know, I'm going to get an idea of what repairs might be. See here, wholesale price after repair values, apparently 200 grand, but we'll see. Move in ready, quick cleanup. So I'm assuming not a lot in repairs, but... Once we find out the year, I'm going to get a better calculation of the repair. So now I'm going to open up REI Auto Comp and run an analysis on this property. So I'm going to paste this in Town Lee, and I believe it was Phoenix. And what's the zip code? Um, they don't have a zip code. Great. Townley is 85051 and it's Phoenix. Okay. Now it's going to find the property. You can see it's a 3 2, it's 1700 square foot. So it's meeting the criteria of what my buyer is looking for. And being that it's built in 62, I'm going to assume it's in just good condition, fair to good, really. Um, double check to see if there's a garage. It looks like there's a carport from what I can see. So we'll do a carport. Should be down here. And it looks like they were asking, I think it was like 135. I'll double check that in a second. Something like that, guys, is going to need 10% plus of the ARV, um, you know, for repairs. So you're easily looking at $20,000 right there. And I actually want to make about Let's see if it's ARVs that probably about the same. I'll do, let's see for every 25,000 value. I want to make about 2,500 bucks. So, you know, we'll also make 10,000 here and we can adjust that um, repairs 20 grand. And I'm just going to double check their um, asking price, which was 139,900. Okay. All right. So now we'll just get some comps and um, 
kind of go from there. Let's see here. All right, so while it's calculating what the current market value in the ARV is, I want to explain a couple of things. And that is that there's a couple of different ways to do the JV. Okay, so one of the questions I get from students and you know other folks who visit the blog often is, you know, how do I lock this up? Especially if there's, you know, a realtor in the deal, or what do I say to the investor to, you know, to let them know that I'm going to bring in a buyer? Um, it's a very straightforward, guys. Once you find out the value, the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to go right, contact the seller, which is an investor, and you're going to explain who you are. Hey, my name is such and such. I'm another investor here in town. I see uh, 4049 West Townley. Um, is it still available? Yep. Okay. Is this a good time to speak? Excellent. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Always find out exactly um, the story on the home. You want to find out as much as you can because every property is different. Not only do you find out about characteristics, but you want to find out, um, you know, about why the seller is selling. And a very important tip here, do they have it locked up under contract? Because you, if they don't have it locked up under, under contract, there's technically no equitable interest. And you guys are probably operating outside of the state statutes. Okay, I'm not an attorney or CPA, but you want to always confirm, hey, do you have it under contract? And in fact, I would get a copy of that contract if you end up moving forward. So this is what you're going to do is you're going to say, hey, listen, um, I have a buyer that's interested in that property. Um, once you confirm a couple things, you can talk a little numbers with them too. You can say, Hey, I see the property's worth about 173. Uh, can you confirm about how much do you think, you know, the repairs are going to be? And they're going to say, Oh yeah, you know, this is what's needed carpet tile paint or whatever. Um, their ARV is not that much off. They said it was worth like 199 ARV. You can see my software says it's 208. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm just going to confirm a couple things before I call them is, is uh, one of them being that the ARV that I'm coming up with is accurate. You can see that um, some of the properties here are a little bit larger. You can see, I mean, I could probably go as high as 1,900 square foot, but this one specifically here is not a good comp. So I'm actually going to switch this one out really quickly. This is comp number 23, you can see here. Um, because my ARV, I, I, need to, I need to be conservative on the ARV. So um comp number 23 is i'm guessing it's this one here 8602 let's double check that let's go back up to comps and uh 20 no it's 8602 yeah 39th half okay so 39th half and, and what i'm actually going to do is i'm just going to delete it i'm just going to hit delete and just recalculate and it'll find another property that's you know more like the property so let's see the ARV now. Okay, 201. I'd really like to get that to 90%, but for sake of the training, um, I'm going to focus on the numbers down here. So you guys can see that if I do this deal and I want to make $10,000, the most I can offer is 111. So I'm just going to assume, boom, 111, and you can see I'm making $10,050. Okay. Now, What's the give and take? What's the negotiation? The repairs. You need to find out if, you know, I'm assuming 20,000 in repairs. That means you can go as high as, let's assume repairs are half that. Well, now you can go to 121,000. Does that make sense? So I'm making an assumption. That's the whole reason you're contacting the seller is you, you want to figure out, well, am I, am I kind of on the low ball end because I'm assuming too much in repairs? And figure out if this is going to be a, a fix and flip to a retail buyer or, or is this going to be a rent ready property where you don't have to put that much repairs in. Okay. So once you've talked to the seller um, and you let them know who you are, you're going to ask them, Hey, you know, with this buyer, how did you want to work the JV? Because I can tell you, you know, on my side, guys, as an investor, I always like to go for a specific type of JV deal. And I'm going to show you two ways. The first way is the first thing you're going to do is a lot of sellers don't want to ha have their hands tied meaning that investor, he or she's going to want a serious buyer because they, they are out there. There's cash buyers they can get just randomly just from marketing the property that are serious to come out. They give a 3,000 earnest money deposit and you lose out on the deal because you're potentially a wholesaler. So what you're going to explain to them is, hey, you know, I realize that, you know, there's going to be other buyers potentially. Um, there's a couple different ways I can do this. I prefer one of the specific ways because of the, kind of the hangups with, you know, doing a co-wholesale deal or JV and let them know, you know, I'm sure you agree, Mr. Seller. 
or Mrs. Seller. And um, yeah, so what I can do is I can send you a contract. It's going to be open-ended. It's a flex option. And I just need to get that equitable interest in the property. Um, I'll ask you to send me a copy of your contract. You can block out what you have it locked up for, but I need to know as an investor that you actually have this under contract. Um, right there, guys, you're confirming that you know, they're not a realtor representing the property, and they're not a wholesaler who doesn't even have it under contract and is just marketing it. That's a no-no. Don't ever do that. You'll get blacklisted. Believe me, I know of investors who do that. I don't do that, and I never have. It's so much easier to just do things the right way the first time. So you can send them the flex option. When you and you can get it under contract. The flex option, what does it look like? Well, I have it right here on the desktop. It's just, there's a date, you name the parties, the option E and option or, you put the property address and you put in the price. Now, what is the price? That's what the whole reason I'm doing this training. What do you lock it up for? Well, if you guys know that I want it for 111, okay? So I want this property for $111,000. So, sounds simple enough, right? But do you simply, you have some options. Do you send them a purchase and sell agreement? And then if you find a buyer, you know, a, go ahead and sign another purchase and sell with your buyer and uh, take it all to close. Um, that's definitely one way. But here's the thing. You have no idea what that investor has the property locked up for. And you might be leaving some money on the table. Now, frankly, that's none of our business, at least in terms of we want everyone to make money. But what you don't want to do is if you fail, and I have software to prevent this, if you fail to get it at a great price, you're really going to waste everybody's time. You're going to you're going to you're going to do a poor job of making a relationship with the investor, and you're going to waste all of your buyer's time. Okay, so luckily, you know, I was able to invest in creating the software to make sure I make accurate um, you know offers to my buyers and sellers, but you don't want that to happen. So. What you're going to ha have to do is you're going to have to do a little negotiation up front with your investor, your seller, and you're going to simply say, hey, look, there's a couple ways we can do this. I obviously don't know what you have it locked up for, but as a JV, we have a couple options. I can send you this flex option at the price you want to sell it for, and I could add my commission, fee, whatever you want to call it on top of that, okay, um, which is great. And if I bring in a buyer, I'll, I'll exercise my option and I'll do a purchase contract, which looks like this. Let's say you find the buyer and, uh, oops, you find the buyer and you basically then write up an official contract, literally between you and the seller again, right? So you exercise your option, then you write, uh, you exercise that and you write up a contract for sale, okay? Then that contract can officially be assigned. You don't necessarily want to assign your option because that's going to require your, your end buyer to then execute the option into a contract. So in this case, do this, do the work for your end buyer. If, if you end up getting it under contract and you market it for your buyers and the buyer bites and sends you a purchase and sale agreement for a price then higher than what you locked it up for, which is 111, um, then go ahead and, um, you know, send everything over to the title company. Now that's one way to do it. Again, start with a flex option and bring in a buyer, and then execute your option. Another way to do it is just do it straight with the contract. Maybe you don't want an option. Maybe the seller doesn't mind you locking it up and having them not being able to find another buyer. You can just do a, a contract for sale, right? And then when you find the buyer, just get the purchase contract from the buyer, okay? So what's interesting about this, guys, is you, you have to realize that there is two purchase and sale contracts. There's one between you and the investor, which is your seller, right? And then there's going to be one between you and your end buyer. And how everything is going to, how everybody's going to get paid is your title company is going to do what's called an assignment. So they're then going to assign the contract that you have between the, between yourself and the seller, which is the investor to the end buyer for a fee, i.e. $10,050. And they're going to, your title company, now you could do this before closing, um, that is a technique that some investors do, but um, the title company will have an assignment contract on file. If you've seen my training video on how to find a title company, they'll have one on file. A lot of times they'll just, they'll fill all this stuff out for you and you just sign it at the end of the day at the, at close of escrow. All right. So that's one way. Again, flex option into purchase and sale, collect another purchase and sale from your end buyer, send it all the title, title does an assignment. That's one way.